Ybor City, Tampa, Florida, you all know me. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the meeting that we just had over at Seminole Heights in regards to segment seven, uh, which is the area north of the I-4 that runs uh, right about Tiberias. Um, really concerned about this project because half of it or portion of it is actually included in SEIS. I don't know why FDOT wants to accelerate and push a segment forward. That's a big problem. As you know, back in January I was here, I warned this board about the segment seven and the work plan. Unfortunately, you guys approved it. So now we had to waste a lot of people's time coming out to some law heights and to say that they want no build. We could have avoided this altogether. We could have asked, hey, what if we take $300 million, send it back, reallocate it, repackage it to use for CSX? Again, I don't know, these things to me, I guess are apparent, but um, I just hope that you guys take a quick, a good look at the work plan and some of your documents to realize that we just don't have to go this far. Um, one of the things about segment seven too is even though we're, out, we're only adding um, you know, the additional lane and we have that shoulder, there's no guarantee that FTOT's gonna say it's gonna be no toll forever. So there, there's, as we see with other projects, that can change. We saw that with HOV to toll lanes a long time ago, just throughout the nation. And now we're seeing the right of way being privatized and double towed, tolled or taxed on Flor Floridians. Um, the other concern that I have too is that I recently lost a property. Well, I didn't, but my neighborhood did on 12th Avenue. It was an old uh, quadplex over there. Um, it's actually the photos in the Library of Congress. That got tore down while we were in this uh, TB Next process. And so now I'm dealing with a lot more blight in my neighborhood. And what I mean by that is a lot of empty spaces. We're in a landmark historic district in Ybor City. Um, and so right now I'm working with FDOT. I'm trying to get some lighting out there and it's the best I can do. The best I can do is put pole lighting in my historic neighborhood in Ybor City and see homes go away. So this stuff is occurring right now, which is why I'm asking you guys to kill this project immediately. And you guys have the power to do that anytime you want. Anytime you guys meet up in the sport meeting, you can stop this project because I'm tired of seeing bits of my neighborhood being lost and I'm tired of being blighted. Um, and another quick thing too, we're going back to the letters again. As you know, I tried to warn this board a couple months ago about the letter to Senator Roussan to approve the West Shore interchange uh, work that was gonna add toll lanes and um, more capacity. As you know, uh, the Suncoast Parkway too is linked to the veterans, which is linked to us. If we do toll lanes in the West Shore area, it's only gonna justify this project. We saw it with the I-4 to be um, the ultimate I-4, which is 2.3 billion. Now we're seeing a $5.8 billion project called Beyond the Ultimate I-4. FDOT never gets enough. They just wanna keep on going. So we need to change the conversation and stop this now. Thank you. Sure. Rick Fernandez. Good morning. Good morning. Rick Fernandez, 2906 North Elmore. Good morning to all of you. Um, uh, for starters, I want to incorporate by reference Chris's comments. I agree with all of them, so that'll save us all a little bit of time. Um, you might look at this as a preview of the uh, tip review to take place in June. I'm starting to kind of build myself up for the Super Bowl again uh, since we do this once a year. Um, and I intend to come here as often as I can between now and, and June 11, I believe the date is, to continually ask you to take action to remove any remnant of TBX from the tip. It seems that, you know, we can, we can say it once a year. I'm thinking maybe if I say it three, four, or five times a year, maybe it'll take because it never seems to go away. Um, last year I told you that TBX was not dead, all rumors to the contrary notwithstanding. Uh, it has, in fact, been broken into component parts. Um, it's filed away in the TIP document, as it appeared last year at Table 2, priority number 32. If you uh, comb your way through the line items of that section, you will see all the independent parts of TBX there. In particular, uh, Section 4, which is the West Shore Interchange, Section 6, which is the Downtown Interchange, and Section 7, which is the, uh, the section under PD&E review now, which is, as Chris suggested, the portion of 275 corridor north of downtown, up to the Beers uh, apex area. Um, I am asking uh, this board uh, again and finally to remove section six from the tip, 
That is reference number 1005 in the TIP document from last year, section 7 from the TIP, that is again the subject uh, area under study that Chris mentioned that was part of the public hearing in uh, Seminole Heights last week and it was very well attended and you would have been hard pressed to find anyone in the building which was standing room only or probably within a quarter mile of it who would be in support of that project. And why? For some reasons that Dr. Wong is going to be coming up here to tell us about later because it's not good for our health to have corridors of this type running through our urban core and uh, frankly it's inconsistent with our presumed effort to avoid projects that are related to capacity. We're supposed to be moving away from capacity projects that put more cars on the road. And yet, on the same day at the CAC last month when Johnny Wong presents his uh, state of the system that tells us that, FDOT comes in to tell us that they want to add capacity to the primary quarter on 275 right through the middle of our neighborhood. So uh, please, no to section six, no to section seven, finally put these, uh, these projects to rest. See you next month. <laughs> Kevin O'Hare.